Hey everyone, this is Casual Fanatic. Film reviews without the shoes. I'm Luca, your casual viewer. And I'm Cayman, your fanatic. Hey man, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm um, doing the same, I'd say. Just pretty good. Nothing nothing too crazy. I have a birthday party I'm going to today, and then at 1 p.m. there's a, a soccer game. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing out of the ordinary for me, really. That's exciting. Yeah, what about Am? Um, I went to a birthday party last weekend. Oh, nice. I heard it was, it was a, uh, pretty chill. Yeah. Oh, wait, that was a chill one, not the other one? Wait, that was a graduation thing. Uh, yes. I'm getting your parties mixed up, but dope. Yeah. I think you're thinking of the, like, the big one, the house I party. I think that was like, yeah, like two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a graduation party. Birthday party was much more chill. We just like ate and played some games. <laughs> yeah. That's the mood. That's the mood. This one that I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit more upbeat, I believe. Um, there's like a ton of people going. So we'll see how that is. I have to drive out to it too. So we'll see. We'll see. How's work been treating you? Work's been amazing dude um i've been what have i been doing last week oh yeah last week i was helping another project with some some uh like site work and renderings and stuff like that for a handoff and yeah. the, the dude i was working for and the principal we just looked at it all on thursday and they loved what was shown they hope the clients will love it too so that's been all going good what about you i heard you I, I wish i could say the same yeah i heard you were yeah what's up um, it, things have just been really weird recently and, um, the like leadership team keeps talking about things as if they're like really trying to improve the team and make everything better. But it just like feels very empty and mm. there's been a lot of words and not a lot of action. Oh, so, boy. wait, like what? Well, like just the fact that like mostly I guess the biggest complaint from me and my coworkers is just the amount of time that we're given is never enough. And then when they complain about stuff not getting done on time and then act like it's completely our fault when there's like a lot of stuff that's not in our control. Uh, okay. Like for just for example, the um the like normal timeline for a like original issue is about eight to ten weeks uh -huh. and like we like need that entire time to work on the project uh, and right. and then they will like schedule us for a scope trip where we have to be like gone for a week or they'll give us like two or three different revisions and each of those also takes like a week and there's just like all of this stuff that they're like just trying to slip into our timeline and I'm like, if I spend a week doing a change for a different project, then I need that week back in my original issue timeline. I can't just like all of a sudden work faster. It's great. And they're just like not, they're not very good at factoring all of that stuff in when they create project schedules. Mm -hmm. And then I had, I had my employee conversation last week and, um, they were like basically saying that the message I got from it was, is they're expecting us to just like make up the difference. Like if we know that there's a scope trip coming up and we're going to be gone for a few days, then we need to work extra hours before and after the trip. Huh. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Honestly, that's kind of how my last firm, I'm not going to name drop my last firm, but that's exactly how my last firm worked. They'd expect us to like work extra hours prior to leaving for a trip for the job and after and like work weekends for the job just to get that stuff right. done to, to pick it up 
So I'm like, you're going to, I'm going on a work trip and you're going to expect me to work extra to make up for my work trip. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. And then on top of that, they brought up, like, they seem to have like a similar attitude about PTO, which was like really irritating to me. Cause I'm like, if I, it, 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 they were talking about like one of my, uh, like project managers, um, he, I mean, he takes PTO from time to time, but compared to everyone else, he like usually doesn't take PTO and they were like, yeah, he usually doesn't take pto because he knows that he's going to have to work more to to make up for it and he doesn't want to do that so he just doesn't take pto and i'm like he shouldn't have to make up for pto like if i if i take eight hours of pto and you're expecting me to work four hours before i leave and four hours when i get back then i haven't really had any time off i've just shifted that time to a different place right yeah it's kind of illegal i feel like no it should be yeah i think it might be it's yeah, crazy. But it's wild. And over the past week or so, um, because our company's uh, CIO works in our office and he's been like going around and get, like one on one getting feedback from everyone. Yeah. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out solutions so we can make everything better. And then my program manager set up a meeting for this upcoming week where we can all like sit down together and like brainstorm how to make things work. And I'm just like, I just don't think anything is going to come of it. Like, I'm not very optimistic about it. Mm, gosh, I got to damn. Well, I mean, you're not going to be there for much longer, right? I mean, yeah, but it's still irritating. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Like, what did the conversation even end to? You just kind of gave in and caved and were like, sure, whatever. Um, during my employee conversation, yeah, it was just like I was talking about and just like other little irritating things where it's like we have we have a a QC team who is a, like in charge of going over everything like as a, just a final check and making sure that everything's good. And it seems like all of the people that we're supposed to consult with to make sure that our projects are good can never seem to agree with each other. Like mm -hmm. we have one person that's like in charge of like code review and so she'll go in and make sure everything is up to code and then one of our qc people is constantly leaving code related comments and i'm just like why can no one explain to him that that's not his job like we have someone else for code we don't like if it's if she's already reviewed it and approved of it i don't need you telling me what you think i should do because of the code because chances are you're wrong Damn, that's wild. And, and then there's like, even between, so our QC team is two people and even they can't seem to agree with each other. Like if you send your project into one person, you'll get completely opposite comments from if you send it into the other person. And so I'm like, why don't we have like some sort of company standard on this? Like we need, they need to get together and decide mm -hmm. how they're going to comment on things. Because when you get a comment from one person and it says one thing, and then you get a comment from another person and it says a different thing, like w that shouldn't, that shouldn't be happening at that level. Yeah. Yeah. And I brought that up during my employee conversation and they basically said that that's pretty much my job. Like it's up to me and my project project lead to sort through all of those people's comments and decide who's correct. Man, that's so weird. That's very strange. I don't know, man. So yeah, that's um I yeah, my last trim just didn't they didn't really care about employee things, which is why I left. So I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's insane. And and like on top of the time constraints, there's also just like it, it, cause uh, one of my coworkers tried to, uh, like call HR and talk to them about it and was like, Hey, because it was a couple of weeks ago, um, she was working on a project and she was already like working late and then her internet stopped working. So she messaged her project lead was like, Hey, my internet stopped working. So I'm not going to be able to finish this tonight, but I'll get on it, you know, first thing in the morning. And, um, he messaged her back and asked her to drive back into the office and just use that internet and work there. No, but it was boy, like, man. it was like 10 or 11 at night. Mm -hmm. Asking her to drive back into the office. And she's like, I'm not going to go back. First of all, I'm not driving all the way back to the office. Second of all, like, like bro, obviously, I, I feel like I feel like our our city is a pretty safe place. But still, like as a woman, you don't want to be going out in the middle of the night by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she told him she was like, hey, that just like I want you to know that makes me super uncomfortable and I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that's fucking weird, bro. Why not? 
That's very And strange. so she was she was trying to talk to HR about that and like see like what that's about. And the uh, the HR rep basically had the response of, well, I know some other employees that would have driven back in. It's good. Oh my God, dude. And I'm like, what the fuck is that response? Wow. That's a really bad HR team right there too. <laughs> Some eye. That is wow. Well, your firm seems kind of ass. Yeah. Um, have you been looking for other things? I have, but it's really tough. The the area that Elaine and I are moving to is kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and so unless I want to be driving like over an hour every day to get to a bigger city. Which I mean, I may have to end up doing. I've been trying to find like a place that would just let me work remote. That's so hard to figure. Because I'm, it is super hard to find. To work for the same firm that you're with currently, remote. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think they'll let me. I, I might bring it up when I tell them that I'm leaving. But yeah, man, that's rough. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just gotta drive that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so how far away is where you're living from um, Elena's school? From the school, it's super close. We're like 15 minutes. Why don't you guys go half-half? Uh, because Elena's school is more important, and it's like, I th- I think she would benefit more from being close to campus. Mm, okay, I gotcha. Well, I hope things work out, man. Keep me updated. Updated. Yeah. There's also just not a whole lot of, like, there are places in between school and the city that I would probably be working in, but it's, like, very sparse. Uh, it's, it's a bit bad. Yeah. Because we're, like, kind of in, like, a, like a, a, like, a state park or, like, a national forest or something like that. And so it's, like, we have the town that we're going to be living in, and then there's, like, forest, forest, like, absolutely nothing, but maybe a few houses out there. Uh, and than a big city so there's not really like an in between yeah that's wild that's crazy i know mean, it's just well it's all things to figure out i guess new adventure yeah but yeah i don't know if any like even when i was looking for a new job there was nothing that was like remote everyone wants to come back into the office or wants their workers to be at least in the office yeah. times a week well, and one of my other coworkers was also looking for a new job and he found a place in Dallas that like looked interesting and he had brought like he drove down to Dallas to see them and he said it wasn't very impressive and he was like kind of upset with the way that they presented themselves. Mm. But up until that point, he had like had several phone conversations with them and he like brought me up and was like, hey, um, I have another coworker who's like. He's going to be moving and uh, just like asked if they had remote positions. And they were like, yeah, we already have like two or three people that work remote all the time. And the way that they were explaining it was like, you can work remote. Their only requirement is that you would have to come into the office two days out of every month. But they would like pay for travel and hotel and all that. And I was like, that's not too bad. I can go I can go down to Dallas for two days every month. Even if it's a shitty firm though? Well, I mean, I didn't know it was a shitty firm at the time. Oh, oh I see your stuff. But that's like the attitude leading up to it. And then he went down there and he like brought a copy of my resume with him. Like he was being a real holy, holy crap. <laughs> Um, but he said, first of all, they like, they had told him that he was going to come into the office and everyone would be there so that he could like get a feel of, um, like what everyone's work day is like. And then when he showed up, everyone like left early that day or something. And so there was only like two people there. No way. Oh, that's awkward as hell. <laughs> but of how many though? Oh, I don't know. Is it a big firm or small firm? Um, I'd say small, but not like crazy tiny and yeah. like maybe like 20 to 30 people yeah that's not good if you have an interviewee coming in to interview and you don't have people in your office that's a big uh oh yeah that is not good um yeah he pretty much like shit talked to them when he got back from texas he was like nah they're they're trash actually oh god yeah that ain't the play and then and then like last week i got an i got an email from them and they were like Hey, uh, we saw that you are interested in working for us. Um, I just wanted to check uh, if it would be possible for you to relocate to Plano because that's where their office is. I was like, what? (laughs) I was like, what gave you the impression that I would just all of a sudden quit my Tennessee plans and 
move back to Texas. Yeah, right. That sounds like a terrible time. <laughs> so I emailed them back. I was like, um, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever get an email back from that or no? Yeah, they just said, I understand. Just thought I'd check if your plans had changed. Oh, I was like, no. all right. <laughs> Not how our life works sometimes. Okay. Man, if they're looking for people out of state to move to Plano because they can't get enough people in Plano. That's- no, they were like hardcore. Like my coworker, they, because I don't know, I guess the way that they work is they have like, they just go project to project instead of doing multiple projects because I, I guess their team just isn't that big. So they have like, uh, they do a lot of like, uh, like government work like uh, like fire stations and like things like that that are paid for by the by the city yeah um and so the way i understand it it seems like they just do like they get a project they do that project and then they move on to the next project kind of a thing mm, interesting yeah it's very smart. um but i guess they have a project coming up really soon and so they were like really trying to get my coworker to like hurry up and start so that he could be part of that project and they were like they were like, can you start? They, they were trying to get him start to start within like the next two weeks. Oh my God. Like they were like, they were like offering to buy out like the rest of his lease. <laughs> wow. I mean, dude, if you're going to pay how much, well, how much money would it take? Like if they're willing to pay my relocation and give me 10 extra like, or 20 extra thousand dollars, I'm in. Yeah, they were like, they were, we'll pay for moving, we'll pay for you canceling your lease, and they were even like, we'll give you like an extra 10000 But he just like, I don't know, I don't know what exactly happened while he was down there, but he came back and he was not at all interested in them anymore. Really? Just, I wonder why though, like, uh, I mean... Maybe you saw something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, I, when I, I went to a few different interviews, and there was only one firm where I felt, like, really good about, like, where I was like, this is a place I could work in. The other ones were yeah. cool, but, like, I just never got that feeling from them that was, like, you know, like, worthy of me to even think about working for them. Yeah, he, uh, my, my coworker also, I feel like, a lot of times feels maybe a bit above average on confidence when it comes to finding a job mm. like he's always of the attitude of like it's not a problem like i can i can find another job easy no it's it's hard out there bro you're gonna have to put effort yeah but he put yeah uh, i put a lot of effort in to find my new job and it paid off but honestly. like it to the point where he like he only does like six months lease at a time because he's like i don't know what if six months from now i just want to move somewhere else oh it's that guy oh my god no way i know him right you might. Yeah. Very cool. Alrighty, well, um, besides our- Yeah, crazy bench, stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, besides the, the crazy work stuff. What are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about brand new 2023 Super Mario Brothers movie. Dun, dun, dun. It is directed by Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelnick, Pierre Ledoux, and Fabian Pollock. A lot of directors. A lot. Two of them have a directed by credit. The other two say co-director, but still, that's crazy. I mean, it makes sense. I feel like animated movies tend to have more directors than live action movies, but still, that's the same. That's four of them, though. That's a lot. Like, if one goes sick, then another one's there, just in case. Like, what? <laughs> Written by Matthew Fogel and uh, starring quite a number of famous people. We have Chris Pratt as Mario, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser. Uh, let's see, who else we got? Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson as Comic. Uh, Kari Payton as the Penguin King, Keegan Michael Key as Toad, Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, Seth Rogen Donkey Kong, lots of famous people. Yeah, the only one that I really recognized was Jack Black. Um, yeah, he is, he is a very recon- well, um, Seth Rogen too also has a very recognized. Who is Seth Rogen? Donkey Kong. Oh, damn. Yeah, I should have maybe known that one. I don't know. But I, I, the only reason I knew Jack Black was when he started singing. I was like, oh, I didn't do this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can, we can uh, get into it a little bit more later, but I feel like for the most part, everyone like did something interesting with their voice. Like no one was just like using their own voice. Mm, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, Jack Black was only using his voice, right? He didn't have any extras on it. No, he was like doing a, like a grumble. Like when he was singing, you could tell that it was like just Jack Black singing. But during his talking lines, he was like doing kind of a like Bowsery kind of voice. Oh, I got you. I got you. Um, uh, so this movie came out April 5th. 
It is uh, an easygoing 90 minutes long mm-hmm. and had an estimated budget of $100 million Damn. and so far has made $1.3 billion. No way, really? Yeah, very... Uh, very popular movie. Why is that? Is there like, has this always been? I think, I mean, those? first of all, Mario is just a super famous, like, uh, uh, property. Mm-hmm. And then I think this movie didn't really do anything like, uh, um, I don't mean this in a bad way, but also maybe I do, but they didn't really do anything creative. I feel like this movie played everything very safe. And so it's an easy movie for like, like, and it's made by Illumination, who is the same company who did all the Minions movies. So like very easy movie for like parents to take their kids to. And you know, there are some kids out there who like want to see it more than once. And they're just like, fine, whatever. And Mm -hmm. it'll shut you up for an hour and a half. Right, 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 right. And yeah, so it's just a a family fun movie. And that probably helps a lot with being so popular, I think. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But what did you think about the Super Mario Brothers movie? Um, I thought it was... So like, I've never seen a movie like that before. I don't know if that's like a new style of like, I guess, cartoon or animation or something like that. But um, I think it was a pretty fun watch. I think I would have loved it more if I actually knew the story of Mario and or just like knew the characters in general. Um, Have you ever played like any Mario games? Not like not like you would have played them. I don't think like I've I've obviously played the the games like Mario. What was it called? Uh, the, the racing game that's the only thing I've ever played Mario Kart yeah, oh, yeah. everything else I, I've never I've never played so interesting yeah, I like don't know like their stories and I don't know if the movie was based off of those stories I have zero clue yeah I mean every every game is kind of different but this definitely had very similar themes um, I would say the biggest thing and again I, I have a, a whole thing I want to talk about later with this but I think the the biggest change I would say is uh, usually uh, Bowser has already captured Princess Peach mm-hmm. and the like the goal of the game is to rescue her and so you like go around the map and do all these different levels to try and rescue peach gotcha gotcha okay uh, but in this one, she was not captured. In fact, Luigi was the one that got captured. Mm. Uh, there also is not a whole lot of crossover usually between Mario and Donkey Kong. The like Donkey Kong games are their own thing. Yeah. And like the, there have been a couple games. And I mean, obviously, Mario Kart being one of them, there are a couple games where they like occupy the same world. Mm-hmm. But that's not a that's not a common thing, I would say. Gotcha. OK. OK. Yeah. And like I was saying, like, maybe if I had known all this stuff prior to me getting into it, I would uh, enjoy right. it maybe a little more. But I still think it was cool. OK. OK. That's pretty chill. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I I think it was also like it was decent. I think definitely uh, it went really hard on the references. So I feel like for like for someone who doesn't really know a whole lot lot about the mario universe like a lot of that stuff is probably just like Like right over my head yeah yeah for sure and i don't know if that necessarily makes it better or worse i personally i feel like they maybe relied on the references a little too much like it wasn't like listen we've created this cool story it was like we have a very basic story and then we're just gonna pile on top of it all of these like look at this do you remember this what about this over here oh this was in the game you know you know that thing right and i don't think it any of those honestly <laughs> yeah so i'm guessing you obviously did the playthrough of all the games or at least have i mean definitely not all of them but i'm i mean they're all fairly similar so i'm i'm familiar with the the lore gotcha 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 okay um what did you think of uh of its of its animation of its like the graphics that it used it felt very uh like pretty much accurate to the like current uh the the current style that the video games have they they changed the character models a little bit mm. but they're still very recognizable and like if you open up Mario Kart 8 like 
Mario looks almost exactly the same. Luigi looks almost exactly the same. Yeah. Like, I feel like they pretty much just made it look like the video games. Interesting. I, I think the one character that looks a little bit weird to me was Peach. I completely agree. Yeah. I think Peach, I don't know. I'd have to look at a side by side of her, the movie Peach versus video game Peach. But I feel like something, I don't know, like her face was too narrow or something. I feel like everyone else was way more round mm -hmm. and she just was not at all yeah i don't know what and it kind of threw me off yeah and at one point her eyes did like some weird thing that like just confused me but <laughs> that's just you know i don't know but yeah she looked she looked a little bit strange all the other ones i could like recognize off of recognize off of you know the other things that i've seen but just her character was a little bit there's something about it like you said either her face was yeah. skinny or i don't know what it was no idea uh but anyway let us go ahead and step into the box ding ring Let's do it. Um, I think it's my turn to go first. Um, let me look. It is. All right. All right. Is it? Uh, so Maybe. I will say, um, after, uh, um, or no, um, yeah. A after being sucked through a mysterious portal, um, uh, Mario, uh, a, a plumber named Mario, a pl <laughs> Mario, a plumber from New York must, uh, uh, traverse the mushroom kingdom with the help of princess peach and some others to find his lost brother luigi that's what i got okay um i will go with <laughs> new york brothers mario and luigi were sucked into a drain while trying to save new york they were split up and will be needing to find each other with the help of princess peach and gang uh, <laughs> uh, so that the brothers can reunite themselves okay and our official letterboxed summary here says while working underground to fix a water main brooklyn plumbers and brothers mario and luigi are transported down a mysterious pipe and wander into a magical new world but when the brothers are separated mario embarks on an epic quest to find luigi I I think I might give this one to you just because you mentioned that they were trying to fix something when the when the transportal thing happened. Yeah, and I did not mention that. Uh, I will say though that I, I just mentioned like the brothers to reunite, and you were like he was actually looking for Luigi, so you know whose point of view it was from. But you did say that they got separated. Yeah, I just said Luigi got lost. That's true. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I, I think you are. No, I think I did too. And I was like listening. I was like, oh, I said that. Oh, I kind of said that. Oh, nice. I said that. <laughs> cool. All righty. That was a fun one. Well, I think it's time for a little break here. Indeed. And then we'll be back. All righty. Look at us being back. We are back. Hello, hello, audience. Alrighty, well, I think because this is such a new movie, um, our spoiler buddy will be here. <laughs> you invited him? I, I did. He's, what's I get? Hey, man, you want to do the spoiler thing? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, thanks, bro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 2020 story movie, and this is your spoiler alert. If you don't want the movie spoiled, don't listen. Thanks, bro. All right, my friend. Alrighty, come on, help me. <laughs> Everyone knows now that you know there's a spoiler section. So where where do you want to start? Um, well, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Uh -huh. I think the intro on this movie is maybe my favorite part. Of the thing the where Bowser attacks the the Penguin Castle. Yeah, and I'm a little disappointed because they just the, so they released a teaser before the movie came out, and it was literally just this scene. And obviously, it's like it's not a spoiler because it's the first scene in the movie but still it's upsetting because i i love this scene i i don't know what it is i think i just i love when there's tiny characters with a disproportionate amount of confidence and <laughs> but just seeing like this huge army roll up and then the penguins are just like yeah fuck with the <laughs> throwing snowballs like what yeah. 
<laughs> and then they like, it obviously doesn't hurt them at all. And the Penguin King is like, that was but a taste of our fury. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, was, I love these guys. I was low-key lost, though, at the beginning, man. I'll be real. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't know. It's like, I, I didn't, again, I don't watch trailers of movies. So I didn't know if that was like, I, I was just lost. I didn't know who the Penguin people were. I didn't, I don't know. Anything. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not important to the story. It was just a setup. Yeah, but like, why? Why was it in there? To show that Bowser is evil? I think, first of all, yeah, just to show an introduction of Bowser's army and show how powerful he is, but also just because he had to get that, the power star from somewhere. Mm. And so they're like, all right, we'll just say the Penguins had the star. Gotcha. It's um, but yeah, I, I, it obviously is a very inconsequential scene, but I just thought it was really fun. No, it was definitely fun. Um, when he got the star, I was a little bit confused as well. Like, isn't the star so like right when you touch the star, it makes you go like, you know, the, the rainbow colors and you're basically invisible, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but like, why did he need it? And why was it, you know, so poorly safeguarded? So his plan was to get the star to impress Princess Peach so that she would marry him. Interesting. Okay. And then his alternative was if she doesn't marry me, then I'm just going to use this star to destroy her entire kingdom. Mm, okay. 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 I guess that makes sense. But it's kind of a fucked up way for him to think that she'll like him if he knows her at all. 100%. Like 100%. What? <laughs> he's always... Um, I also, I, so I will say getting back to it just on a, a more surface level, I think I was a little worried when they announced that Chris Pratt was going to be Mario, just cause like, I don't know, I, people have different feelings about Chris Pratt. I think, uh, for the most part, I, he, on a personal level, I'm not the biggest fan of his. I think, uh, work wise, it's very hit or miss. I think when he's trying to do something fun funny like in obviously he's i i think he did great in parks and rec mm. and i think he's good in guardians of the galaxy yeah. because those are more comedic roles and i think he's a very comedic actor i think when they try and put him in serious stuff it doesn't work as well like the jurassic world movies where he's just like bland action hero man i didn't like didn't watch those that's, were they any good i watched the first one and i saw clips of the second one and then i didn't even bother with the third one i'm um, interested so no but <laughs> so no I, but even in the first one which i did watch all the way through he was just a very boring character gotcha and i i don't know if that's i can put all of the blame for that on chris pratt because obviously like the character was written in a very boring way as well mm, yeah but i don't know i think i think chris pratt performs better in comedic roles than he does in dramatic ones i mean he he does kind of have like that that vibe around about him of like just not being serious being kind of like a i don't know like a kind of a dummy low-key <laughs> Yeah, but like a serious dummy. I don't know. And but I I think I was definitely a little put off when they were like, and Mario is going to be voiced by Chris Pratt. And I was like, that oh, man. And I feel like a lot of people felt that way because I don't know. I there there was two options. And I surprisingly, I think they found a middle ground, which I definitely was not expecting. But I was like, either they're going to have Chris Pratt doing the cartoonish Italian accent the whole time, <laughs> which is first of all like a little insensitive and second of all i don't know if he can pull it off or it's just gonna be chris pratt sounding like chris pratt the whole time yeah. and that's not fun yeah, yeah but they like you can tell that he was kind of doing like a little bit of like kind of a italian brooklyn accent but not going overboard with it mm. um and I, I i i think i don't know if the voice actors did this just by themselves or if there was like a little bit of digital assistance um, but people sound, or, or I guess no one else really got the, the normal red mushroom, but with Mario, at least I could tell he sounded different when he was small than when he was big. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think when he sound, when, when he was like normal sized Mario, I couldn't tell as much that it was Chris Pratt, but then when he eats the mushroom and gets bigger, then it just sounded like normal Chris Pratt. So that was a little disappointing, but overall I'd say, um, he didn't do a terrible job. Yeah. I don't think I had any issues with any of their voice. 
voice actors in this movie. Yeah. I think they all yeah. sounded and relatively, I don't know. Like you said, I fun. think Jack Black, especially when he's singing, is very obvious that it's Jack oh, Black. Sure. That's the only time I actually... Um, I think Seth Rogen was really obvious as Donkey Kong, but also I didn't mind it as much. Um, Charlie Day was pretty obvious with Luigi, but he was also like, he wasn't just doing his own voice. He also did a little bit of an accent. Um, I honestly couldn't place Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach, but I feel like that's just because uh, uh, she doesn't really have as recognizable of a voice, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It helps her blend into different roles. Um, And then the one that I really, like, I didn't know until, like, seeing the credits is Keegan-Michael Key as Toad completely unrecognizable to me yeah i mean i i wouldn't know them even if you told me their name oh like cool 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 but i mean if, <laughs> if you don't recognize it is that because he just changed his voice that much or is it because like i don't know i well that's what i'm saying i like i think he definitely was like putting on a voice but also i think the like the register that toad speaks in is maybe a little too high for keegan michael key to naturally do so they probably like pitched his voice up a little bit yeah to make him seem smaller yeah Gotcha. What did you think of Toad? I thought he was fun. I I, I liked the idea, and it, this happened a little bit with Luigi as well, but I like the idea that everyone is just like the biggest wingman for Mario. Like, there's a point where uh, Bowser is, is torturing Luigi, and he, he's like, he's like, do do princesses find him attractive? And Luigi goes, they do if they have good taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, she, when you said that, I was like, oh, shit. Like, rubbing it in his face. And then later, <laughs> when, they're, when they're driving on uh, Rainbow Road, and then Donkey Kong starts making fun of him. He's like, "There's no way a princess would ever date you." And Toad rocks up, and he's like, "He abs- or she absolutely would. I promise." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was trying to you know, let him in. And I think she did start liking him at one point, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, and there was never like a romantic connection between them. Like, I don't know. They they definitely like, they seemed t- they like they liked each other, but not necessarily in like a like-like kind of a way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, going, staying on the topic of the the voices, I did really like the the commercial as well, where they like they did do the over the top Italian accents, and they even like called it out a little bit after it's over. And they're like, "Is the accent too much?" And then there's the the guy at the at the arcade machine, and is like, "No, it's perfect." And he uh, the person who was voicing that guy is uh, Charles Martinet, who voices Mario in the video games. Interesting. That uh, Charles Martinet also voices voiced Mario's dad. Wait, really? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I think all their voices were good. I think I, I, I usually have a problem with certain characters, voice actors, just with how they're presented. But this one, all good for me, at least. It, it, I had no problems Which, with it during the movie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of Mario's dad, complete asshole. Hated that guy. <laughs> Was he? Wait, why? I think so. Well, he literally, like, the first time we see him is them at the dinner table, and he's basically telling Mario, like, great, not only have you wasted your own life, but you're wasting your brother's life, too. Mm, that's fair. That's and I'm just like, what a jerk. <laughs> I'm just a fucking father, man. That's a dad 101. No, I agree. And then, and then he's, like, trying to act all proud at the end of the movie, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait. So your kid literally had to save the world to earn your respect? Hilarious. Like, I wonder if that's kind of like a play on Italian families, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, my family is not Italian, yeah. so I couldn't tell you. I could ask some of my Italian friends, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so what what did you think about kind of like the the precursor to them being in the other world, like with all of them um, like needing to fix that that rich person's house and the dog, or that part where I, mean, I hated the dog. The dog, the dog was, was so stupid. I agree. I don't know that that whole dog thing kind of like there's no point but really i don't know like i get what they're trying to do where they're like they're trying to illustrate that mario and luigi are good plumbers but for some reason bad stuff always happens to them and so they don't like they don't have a good reputation because they just are always in unfortunate situations well yeah but the dog was like be so lively and animated yeah and like destroy the entire bathroom i was like it was honestly starting to piss me off 
off a little bit. Yeah, like everything was broken and the pipe bursted throughout the whole house. And then it was, uh, but then like the same thing happens when they're in the sewer where like you can tell that they're like they're smart and they know what they're doing because they're like, hey, we need to go into this area and we need to reach that pressure valve and fix that and blah, blah, blah. And then while they're going, it just like falls apart. And it's like, that's not their fault. That's not that they're bad plumbers. They just are always in bad situations. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. The dog was just, um, what could you say? The dog was just a dick. And uh, how did you feel about, there was that one part where they're like, um, when they're trying to get to the the rich person's house and they're running through the street and there's a section where there's like a construction yeah. site and then it like kind of does like a side view so that it looks like a Mario video game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was probably one of the coolest parts for me in the beginning sequence. Um, I don't know. I think it was cool that they kind of did a like that Mario himself was like just like super parkour, hardcore. And then he always like, you know, you can just open the doors, but he did so, it's like everything so extra. And then he opened the doors for Luigi, who apparently was just not that, you know, athletically gifted, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I think it was like a cool, it was a cool sequence for me to watch. I, I, I liked, I, I don't know. I just liked it. I liked, you know, him jumping and doing some parkour and like the, the, the construction people kind of being like, what the heck, man? Yeah. Um, but hey, man, they had to get to their job, man. Their first job ever. So yeah. I, mean, it's not- I think it, I think the sequence was a little fun. One thing that, and it's not just this sequence, but throughout the whole movie, I think, okay, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll ask you first. How did you feel about the music throughout the movie? And um, it, I mean, it was kind of just like background noise to me. I don't know. It did, okay. never, it never meant, uh, to me, it never meant to be like in the forefront of anything. It just kind of was like a, a filler of quiet noise. I don't know. Well, I'm guessing you have an opinion about it. I, I don't have an opinion. I, I, that's all right. I think, um, I think I really liked when they had like orchestral versions of the like video game songs. And this probably is also something that you didn't recognize because you didn't play many of the video games. But like there was a lot of sections like when Toad and Mario are heading towards uh, the castle, they play a bit of music that shows up in Mario 64 or when they first get to the like uh like donkey kong kingdom there's like a a little bit of the like donkey kong country theme oh and then there's just like little spots throughout the movie where they're like they'll play they'll like it, it's like a, a score for the movie but they're like integrating themes from the games and i really liked that that's pretty cool, even like yeah. when like when donkey kong comes out in the arena and they start playing the dk rap and that's like such a weird obscure thing but like there was a, a donkey kong 64 game and the intro to the game was like this whole long rap that goes through every single one of the donkey kong characters <laughs> absolutely amazing a plus song but yeah uh but it's another one of those things where it's just like it's not really useful in the movie it's just there so people will be like hey i recognize that interesting yeah i definitely didn't recognize any of it obviously um i was gonna say that um but i forgot now fuck oh well no sorry no you're good you're good uh but i will say as much as i loved the score i absolutely despised the the, the needle drops that they had were garbage by needle drops you mean uh like the like uh like licensed music I, I like the the term comes from like obviously like on a record player you'd like drop the needle yeah, yeah, yeah. start playing the music right um but like when during that construction scene when they start playing no sleep till brooklyn and it's like the most right it did it, it's the most laziest needle drop you could possibly put there just because like oh they're in brooklyn so i guess we'll play this song about brooklyn <laughs> yeah i mean why not uh, it was just boring and then they did they did take on me when they're like driving mm-hmm. through the donkey kong area that felt weird they did um holding out for a hero when Mario was doing that weird training course. I don't know, just every time they like, every time they played licensed music it just didn't work. It felt, it didn't work for oh, me. Okay. Okay, so so that's that's actually what I was thinking about. I was asking like, since they did all those needle drops for, from like games and whatnot was the movie made by the people that also made the games or did they have to ask permission or how, how did that work? I mean, yeah, no, Nintendo was definitely involved in this movie and I that's another thing, I think another reason why it's so popular because Nintendo does not like they don't let their stuff get turned into movies because there was another Super Super Mario Brothers movie uh, back in uh, what year was it? 
My guess is 07. Or is it? Uh, 93. 93? God, nice. Yeah, there was, a, there was a Mario movie in 93, and it was absolute trash. And so ever since that movie came out, Nintendo was like, we're not we're not doing movies anymore. <laughs> Damn it. God. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, God. They just and pulled so out of the movie franchise completely. They were like, mm -mm. Yeah. And so this is, this is the first Nintendo movie since then, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. And so I think a lot of people got excited about that, which is another reason a lot of people went to see it okay that's hilarious though that, you know <laughs> but they were so bad uh, yeah at some at some point we should we should do a review on that movie because it is bonkers oh okay, so i don't want to do another like really <laughs> bad one bro this is <laughs> I am. Okay, well, good for them, because I think this one, obviously, the people's thoughts about it, I'm guessing, were good or positive, right? Um, I would say so. I think it has generally positive reviews. Yeah. Um, I think it most, uh, most people, I would say, probably like it. I'd say maybe people who are more, like, movie critic kind of people probably have more neutral opinions. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone thinks it's bad. Yeah. The, the opinions are ranging from neutral to good okay okay i mean that's that's a that's a plus did we ever say how much it, it, the movie made and how much it cost it to produce yeah it was a uh, 100 million to make, to make and 1.3 billion is the the box office there. that's just that's just unreal i don't know yeah i guess i don't know do you think that adults that really played mario have that nostalgia factor to where they had to see this movie um i'm sure it factored in a little bit and i think that's that's probably why they went so heavy with the references because they're like we know that our story isn't good enough to get people to like us so we're just going to hope that everyone who's played all of these games will just sit there the whole time and be like oh look at that Ooh, look at that yeah, yeah i mean do you think the story could have been made better Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I do. I think uh, I'll, I have a lot to say about that, but right. I have one more thing to say about the music. Okay. okay go for it. <laughs> Um, I think it's especially, I think the needle drops were a little off putting because two of them were already used in movies that also came out this year. Really? Uh, yeah. So no sleep till Brooklyn was just in guardians three. Oh shit. You're right. I forgot about during that. that, that hallway fights. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, holding out for a hero was also just in Shazam two fury of the gods. I mean, but they don't know that, right? I mean, how I mean, do they know? still but but it's not even like they didn't know that but just like as a movie studio that just shows how not creative any of them are that all of these different movies are using the same like five songs yeah that's actually really bad that's true <laughs> from all the billions of songs there are they have to use the same right same three that's crazy yeah and i would say i think uh no sleep till brooklyn i thought it worked well in guardians uh holding out for a hero was also garbage in shazam 2 the song itself isn't bad but the way they used it in both of these movies i felt like was kind of man mm, interesting uh, um but yeah that's it it just like it on top of being lazy it also felt weird because i had within the past month or so just heard two of those songs in two other movies yeah okay but but if you wouldn't have heard them in other movies like would your opinion have changed or i don't think so because i like i have take on me hasn't been in any other movies and i thought that one was weird too that's true that's true um what okay so story-wise yeah that, that's what you'd mentioned before yeah. um i will say i was a little disappointed in the fact that luigi was just a prisoner for 90 percent of the movie yeah i agree i didn't i thought that luigi was gonna be you know you would you would see more of bowser's world and him battling at yeah. that and i thought like mario having been in like the the nice pleasant area you'd see less of him which i thought would have been a cool like change because obviously mario is always going to be the main character in yeah so i i yeah i thought that i thought that this movie was going because it's called the super mario brothers movie and i assumed that the movie would be the brothers working together to solve a problem and they spent the entire first part of the movie when they're in new york establishing their relationship and how they're always helping each other and blah 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 and then as soon as shit goes down they get separated and i was like okay well that's kind of lame uh but then luigi gets sent to that uh i i forget what toad calls it it's like the 
the dark realm or something world or yeah something like that yeah. and when that happened i got excited again for a little bit because i was like oh wait then i thought the movie was going to go in this direction where it would be like rather than having them fight together it'd be like two parallel stories like mario has one adventure yeah. and Luigi has one adventure yeah. and then they meet back up at the end and because there's another there's another game series called uh luigi's mansion and uh or luigi's haunted mansion i don't know if the word haunted is in there but Basically, there's like an entire separate series of games that are just Luigi fighting ghosts in a scary mansion. Yeah. And they like made it seem like that what, what that is what was going to happen because he's like running from all these skeletons and then he shows up to this huge castle and I was like, fuck yes, this is going to be cool. And he goes inside and then it just like immediately he gets captured yeah. and there's none of that anymore. I was like, okay, that's super, super disappointing. Yeah. And like those little dudes with like the, the hoods on, like you never see exactly like what they're about and like yeah. why they were there and that because yeah, I thought it was just like a haunted or like an abandoned mansion yeah uh, yeah I, I, I did wish I would because honestly if I did I loved the 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 world that, that Mario was in I thought the the tube traveling like just seeing how um I guess their city worked was really freaking cool to watch but yeah. I will say that like knowing that everyone was terrified or at least Toad was of Bowser's world and that's where Luigi landed and knowing that he's kind of like a, a like a I don't know, more of a beta. <laughs> I don't know. Like a scaredy yeah, cat? more of a scare, scaredy cat. I thought that's when like he would have become like a man or like a real plumber. I don't know. Something would have, I yeah, something would have happened there. Like yeah, there was development a lot of potential there. Yeah for Luigi to have his own thing and then he just sat in a cage. Right. And I I understand because like I was saying earlier, usually in the games, Princess Peach is the one that you're trying to save. And I get what they're trying to do by having her not be captured because it's like, woo, girl power. And I'm like, all about that. I'm totally fine having Peach be a a strong female character. Yeah. Um, but I don't think her role in the game needed to be replaced. Like if you if you want to be like, hey, we don't want to have Princess Peach just be a damsel in distress. Fine, but that doesn't mean that someone else has to be. Yeah, like that. This could have been Mario, Luigi, and Peach all three fighting together. Right. Right. I totally agree. <laughs> Um, also, I, I, I don't know. It just, yeah, it was, it, there was a lot of lost opportunity there, I think. Yeah. I mean, from a, like a more of like a, I don't know what the hell is going on perspective. That's like the only thing where I thought like the, the loss on the storyline of Luigi was kind of sad. Uh, but yeah. everything else it was cool. It, it worked well. I thought Mario's adventure was pretty dope. And then you saw a little bit of what uh, Bowser was doing with Luigi here and there. And that was also nice to see. Um, and then they went to the Donkey Kingdom, Donkey Kong world. Yeah. And you saw like the race cars and that stuff. That was also cool. I'm, I'm like, I, I like seeing the, the, I love seeing the big changes and the, the drastic differences between the worlds and the, the characters. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And I thought the Donkey Kong fight was also like pretty funny. Um, but the fact that Mario won that was also. Yeah. That was another thing is they make, so, um, there is so peach is like i'm gonna go try and recruit the kong army right. and she is like walking with a purpose going out the door and then mario shows up and she apparently forgets the urgency of her mission because she spends a whole ass day training training him yeah. on this weird like course and you like see it like it becomes nighttime and then it becomes daytime again and i'm like wait a second were you not doing something <laughs> like right. you decided to take a detour um but they show when the 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 obstacle course pops up she like gets through it all super super easy and she's like this badass like parkour fighting person right and then when they get to the donkey kong place um she's like no you you can't fight donkey kong this is a horrible idea and then mario ends up beating him and i'm like if mario beat him then peach definitely could have beat him based on what we saw earlier like peach should be a way better fighter than mario sure absolutely like hands down should be a badass bitch i mean she was here and there so then I'm like, so if she can do all that, why was she acting super scared of Donkey Kong when mm. Mario, who's never fought anyone in his life, beat him? Right, right. And that was on a whim, too. It was like, oh my god, a box. Who oh, hit it? Yay. It worked out. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're a weird thing. He doesn't even know what the power is, but like a cat. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was interesting. That's all I can say. That I thought. I thought. How did you feel about mm. uh, Peach's? Because we we see a glimpse of Peach's backstory at one point, and I will say that's another thing that is different from the games. Um, but that, how did you feel about that? Peach's backstory. Um, Take it. I uh, like like what about it? I well, we just like we she tells the story about how she just like showed up out of a pipe one day, yeah, and then the toads like took care of her and trained her. And then when she got old enough, she was like, then they made me their princess. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I thought there may have been a little bit more substance to it, but I think I, my brain just ignored it. Honestly, I didn't really care. I don't know. I, I didn't really care how she became. I thought it was interesting that she was like, oh my God, another human. And that's where I was like, huh? Okay. Yeah. So then like it, that makes it seem like, because there's a part where Mario's like, maybe you're from my world. And I'm like, if she recognizes you as a human, chances are good, unless there's humans in other worlds. But I don't know. I feel like it was heavily implied that she's also from Earth. Yeah. Um, that's what we're... but two things is so that, like I said, that is different because in the games, she is just from the mushroom kingdom and, um, she's, so peach is her first name. She's princess peach toadstool because her dad is King toadstool. Okay. And he's like, he is, he's the king of the mushroom kingdom and she's the princess. But in this movie, for some reason, they make her their princess, even though there's no existing royalty. So I'm like, why? Why, why not queen? Like, why wouldn't you make her your queen? I, I just don't see... Queen Peach. <laughs> really changed right. character like, up. Like, unless they don't understand how monarchy works. <laughs> like, being a princess isn't a position of power. That just means you're next in line to be queen. Right. I mean, if they've never had anyone in power before, it, it wouldn't really matter, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It just felt a little weird. But then on top of that, because they're like, oh, yeah, I was a baby and I came into this world and they show like little toddler peach coming out of the pipe. And I'm like, does that mean her parents just like lost their baby in, in the, the sewer? sewer system? True. And then like they must be devastated. Like <laughs> and they, she never came back. <laughs> yeah, and that that is a little interesting, isn't it? Because the sewer that, that Mario and Luigi fell in was like way, way, way down in the gutter. And if a baby would have fallen into that, wouldn't the parents have been like right behind the baby? Or maybe the parents are also in a different area. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I, I feel like that was just so irrelevant to the show itself or to the movie itself. It didn't really they didn't really think about it in depth. Yeah, it was it was weird. I don't know why they decided to change that. I feel like it would have been fine to just be like, yeah, I was born here and my dad was born here and that's just how it is. And but if she was born there, then just, where's her mama? I don't think they ever explain her mom in any of the games. <laughs> I honestly don't know. <laughs> see, like that's maybe oh, that. See, that would have been a cool thing to have in this movie. Like just kept that story the same, but added a little little spice. Well, you know what's even more weird is in the original game manual. Uh, um, they they say that uh, I think uh, Bowser like put a curse on like all of the people in the Mushroom Kingdom and turned them into blocks. And so like it, I, I don't know, it's it's a very strange thing. But the like the implication there is that like when you're playing the original game, every time you break a block, you're like pretty much killing someone. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh! Wait, because yeah, that's, that's why there's no in in the games. That's why there's no good guys. It's like you have Mario, you have Peach, and then everyone else there is a bad guy, and that's because yeah, Bowser turned all the good power. people into floating bricks. <laughs> yeah, w why though? I didn't even know that Bowser had magical powers. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily Bowser himself. I, I, I'd have to go back and read the manual to see what the specific wording is. But I mean, like we see in this movie, he has Comic, who is his like oh, wizard. Person. True. So that makes sense. Could could have been him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's brutal, though, to have all of them turn into blocks. Uh, that's kind of <laughs> kind of nutty. Okay, um, let's see here. Has Bowser in the games always wanted to marry Peach, or is that something new for the movie? No, that's that's definitely, I feel like, in line with the games. I think there's even one of the games where they, like, do have a wedding. <laughs> really? I mean, they had a wedding year or two. Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, that's that's the implication behind like, oh, why does Bowser always kidnap Peach is because he wants to marry her. That's such a weird thing. It is. It is very weird. There's also um, I don't know if you've uh, heard of Bowsette. No. Which is uh, a, a, some weird, nasty Internet shit. But 
basically, um, it's, uh, it, it, I don't even remember how it started, but there's like, um, a, a weird mashup and it like, it's like a, a cross between, uh, Peach and, uh, Bowser. It's interesting. I yeah. just looked it up and it's, it's very, not what I was thinking. I would see. No, it's uh, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Okay. A lot of fantasy things going on here. Yep. 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 Ah, uh, interesting. Just, um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of like because things in the games are never very clearly explained. So like even things like um, there's another character that's not in this movie called Bowser Jr., who is obviously Bowser's son. But they never explain who Bowser's mother is, and so there's a lot of conjecture. Like is is Peach Bowser Jr.'s mother? <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see how that came around that makes sense um but yeah it's the it's a it's a whole thing the, it's definitely not out of line with the games to say that uh bowser is romantically interested in people no, yeah that makes total sense with what you've been saying yeah um i asked something earlier i forgot when you were in went away and um, god damn it i don't forget and maybe forgetting all sorts of questions well i i said something that was like kind of relevant to my notes but like it was just like a whim of thought you know i gotcha and oh well that's fine i'll skip it what um, did you think of I, donkey world i thought it was pretty cool i think it was uh i guess uh interesting how they tied in um the like mario kartness of it because yeah they so rather than just being like hey we're gonna do mario kart now they made it as if like the whole donkey kong kingdom like they just drive carts around all the time like that's their thing yeah it's like they're the the way of travel yeah um yeah i thought it was but yeah i do yeah i think the um the like kingdom itself i guess wasn't too interesting because it was just like a lot of roads <laughs> with like nothing in between I mean, it was like mountains and like the the roads wrapped around the mountains and yeah, like, yeah. fly like from it, side to it, side it the the mountains and like the the area looked cool i just like didn't see that many i guess like actual destinations like oh. it felt like they were all driving around but not going anywhere right right, right. yeah like you didn't <laughs> see what you saw in peaches which is like people just working and like doing their thing oh yeah that reminds me of another thing in when all of the toads are when mario's walking through like the marketplace there was a part where there's like a line of of blocks and toads are just like lining up to punch them and get coins out of them and i'm like what like what is what are they doing like is that their job is that literally how they get paid is just by punching blocks I know, man. no idea i just thought that that it was like the end of their work day and that's how they get paid i don't know man <laughs> it was wild yeah i mean that that um, been hell, hella fun though for like the animators and the creators to like think of and, and animate yeah i mean i'm sure there was like a lot of even like stuff happening in the background that like even, you would even notice yeah. but someone had to do right right you have to watch it like a few times um but yeah i thought uh cranky kong was was funny um i like you said i think the arena battle i think it could have been better but it wasn't bad yeah yeah um i i will they, there was never really any sense of danger i guess would be my biggest issue with it because like mario got the poop beat out of him yeah but he just like never really like i don't know i feel like there were some things that it looked like should have just completely taken him out and he just like got back up and was fine i agree yeah there, that was one thing like he got beat up so many times in like their world and i guess their world was obviously magical <laughs> Uh, so he was never bruised or anything like that. But like right when they went back to New York City and they had that fight at the very end of the movie, you could tell that he was like beat up and bruised, which I yeah, thought I was interesting. Um, but I did, I did really like, even though it was also kind of just like a look at all these references, I did like the sequence where they were like, all right, get your carts ready. And then they go up to those stations and there's the three little scroll reel. Yeah. That's like exactly like how it is in the game where you like, you have to pick your cart and then you pick your wheels and then you pick your glider. Yeah. yeah. Which I thought that was fun. Yeah, no, that was definitely fun. And and I don't exactly know how it works. Like in the game, like they have like different speeds and like different, you know. Yeah, there's there's different stats for each one. Yeah, but like weird part is that like I so now I'm talking about the game, right? Not the movie. But I, I've done like the exact same cart as like another person and like they have better stats than I did. I just never understood why that's a thing. I just didn't get it. I still don't get it. Is it because he was I've first been... player and I was second player or what? Oh, well, first of all, there are also like secret um like 
like tricks that can help you get ahead. Um, what, dude? Which I There's like, um, man, I've been losing all my life this game because people do secret tricks. Well, it's not necessarily a trick. It's just like knowing how to play really good. <laughs> but like simple little things, like every time you drift, you like build up right, right. boosts. Yeah. And so then when you stop drifting, you boost. And so if you just like drift a bunch, then you on average are going a lot faster than people who don't drift. No, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was totally kidding. I was one first, even with him having better card stuff. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, action does a difference or if it's just like, you know. And mm. then uh, there's also like um, the game is because it's like men for children. And so obviously they don't want to like, they never want to be in a situation where someone gets completely destroyed. And so Mario Kart has built in a way to sort of like Everything keep it competitive. Like, yeah. Yeah. Where like there are special things that only attack the first player and the first player gets less power ups. Like usually when you're in first place, you only get like, Coins. Uh, occasional speed boosts and coins yeah. and the farther back you get the more powerful power-ups you get yeah that is very <laughs> true i noticed that he, he like would get like blue shells or uh like the red shells or like the star boost and i'd get like coins that's all i would go yeah anyway yeah that's just me not knowing um, the game very well so which speaking of there's also a part in here which was probably the cringiest moment in the entire movie which is when that like uh koopa general uh his like tank gets destroyed and then he's like you can't escape me and then he just jumps in the air and yells blue shell and i was like blue shell grow yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. But hey, I mean, that's where Blue Shell comes from. That's what it is. I they mean, yeah, but... cleaned it. <laughs> Did you have to literally just yeah, lay it out loud? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's so stupid. That's very true. Also, the Blue Shell didn't even work correctly because he attacked Mario, but you can see in that scene, Peach is ahead of him, meaning technically she was in first place, and the Blue Shell always hits first place, so the fact that they have Mario oh is God. incorrect. Or, or Mario was ahead of Peach for <laughs> that one spot. By instance, I, and then it, then he slowed down. Absolutely was not. Oh, um, well, it is what it is, you know. They tried. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I also, it just, I don't know, it felt, I, I feel like going back to the wasted potential is they spend so much time, um, of the movie, like recruiting the Kong army. And then there's like this whole big thing and you have all of the, the Kong army in their carts riding down rainbow road. And then, just... and then yeah. And then they immediately, uh, all of them either fall or get captured. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, well, so that was a huge waste of time. No, I, I hundred percent agree with that. I thought that scene may have been a little bit too long um just in general i don't know that it was just like he said a waste of time kind of they could have brought that towards like the luigi story um which yeah i kind of want to use this transition to when he was actually captured in like that lava in those cages above the lava yeah um, i think that was probably for me at least one of the funniest parts it was that like little blue thing a blue guy oh yeah yeah, yeah. A blue guy like the, the just straight sadness and depression i thought was such a good add to the movie of like everyone just like you know being happy and perky and just like you know uppity and whatever and then there's this blue guy who was like ah death finally like thank you for coming and he like never gets it yeah yeah there's that that's a character from uh super mario galaxy which is uh, a very different game from the other ones and i think that's also where uh um, oh crap, I literally like I just had her name in my head two seconds ago. Uh oh <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Rosalina. Good Lord. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Um, yeah. Rosalina is a, a new character that shows up in Super Mario Galaxy. And since then, she has become an, an, a normal part of the rotation. I think you, you can play her in Mario Kart. I think she's in one of the new Mario Party games even. Okay. Rosalina. Um, yeah. I don't know if I've ever heard of her. She's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, she's not uh, She's not in this movie, but uh, the the star thing is called a Luna, and it is also part of that. It, yeah, it's also part of Super Mario Galaxy. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I thought the Luna was cool. Um, yeah. I mean, w w okay, so that was just kind of a, a side thing. I'm not quite sure where you want to go from here, but for me, I'm already kind of at the part of the movie where... Uh, they go to Earth. So that's where I'm at mentally. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and I will say definitely a bunch of people died Guns. because must have freaking must have because this giant castle just like appears in the middle of Brooklyn. <laughs> Crot is everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's no way you didn't kill thousands of people. Just like, yeah, oh. I don't know about that. Yeah, it was an interesting choice to, to make the whole castle appear versus just the, 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 the gang that's going to be fighting each other. Yeah, I don't know. Also, I don't know how at the like after all we can come back to the the whole climax thing but at the end it shows mario and luigi back in the mushroom kingdom and i'm like yeah wait but didn't you destroy all of the pipes like there was a huge explosion inside the pipe system and that like everything blew up and i'm like how did you guys get back oh i didn't think of it like that interesting like I thought... it, it i don't know huh. Felt like they were like stuck on Earth because all the pipes blew up, but then they're just like somehow got back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Good. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just took it as like, I don't know, the, the pipe just like sucked up the, the blast and that was really it. They didn't break. That's kind of where I... Oh, yeah, I guess it didn't really show any of them breaking. I don't know. It just felt like they should have broken because it was a ginormous explosion. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that that I like though that when um, they sent that at, I think it was Princess's World, he like just yeah. made the rocket mad. <laughs> yeah, he like punched it in the eye. Yeah. yeah. And then it like started following him around. But yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. Huh. I guess maybe they didn't. Yeah, well, no, I guess they didn't break because um, the uh, they must have somehow f like done some magic to restore everything because the pipe that goes to New York, we see in a, a post credit scene oh, and like yeah. it looks exactly the same, like nothing happened. Right, so, right. And that's where we see Yoshi. A little, yeah, a little Yoshi egg, which I don't know. That's it felt like a weird tease to me because we already saw like whole stampede of Yoshi earlier in the movie yeah but it's the yoshi that we know i guess but <laughs> it's just like such a weird thing like where is that going yeah and like, where'd that come what what are they trying to tease there's just like oh there's gonna be another yoshi next it's time the like, one. One. so is there gonna be a secret <laughs> you think i'm sure they'll try to make one uh. if they're smart they'll try to make one i would assume what i would do in their position is try and do like different movies like like maybe do like a like a metroid movie and then like a star fox movie maybe and then eventually you can like bring them all up into like a, a super smash brothers movie would be the ultimate goal gotcha um uh but also they may not this that may just be like a weird tease that they never do anything with <laughs> um but yeah what what did you think of the the final i guess fight with bowser um I think that that was more of like a scene of them saving the world right and I mean I thought it was at the time of me watching it, I thought it was really cool. Oh, but okay. looking back again, like just the same critique with the whole movie is like there could have been so much more done. Um, yeah. Like to show that like maybe that New York was also there with them or I don't I don't exactly know how else it could have been played out. But I think there were some missed opportunity of of creativity. I don't know. Yeah. And then the yeah, end where Bill is captured and he's like super tiny and um and he's like in this little cage singing with a piano. I thought that was really fucking cute too. Oh, that's that's a that's another thing where um um when uh, like at the very end, right before they punch him and make him small, there's a scene where Mara and Luigi grab his tail and then they like spin him around and toss him up into the air. Yeah. That is like right out of Mario sixty four. There's a yeah, every time you fight bowser in that game like that that's how you beat him is by grabbing his tail and spinning him. really interesting yeah. so that's the only weakness he has <laughs> and it's a i don't i know this isn't actually what they're saying but um i i guess it's just a, a combination of uh it's an old game and so the audio quality isn't superb but usually when you're spinning him around and then you throw him mario says what sounds like so long gay bowser no way <laughs> but i like like i said i know that's not what he's actually saying but that's exactly what it sounds like well maybe he is gay but he's trying to hide it with princess peach <laughs> you know like yeah let me see if i can i can send you something real quick oh, no. oh, oh yeah i hear it <laughs> i heard that i heard it you heard that yeah yeah yeah, there's so you can you can see the the spinning as well. 
but it, there's I, I forget exactly how it happens but there's there's parts where he like gets knocked down and then you just have to like pick him up and throw him at a bomb no, and then the don't. bombs hurt him that's awesome that's funny well okay so that was my thought about the ending scene what about what about your thoughts um i thought it was kind of cool um seeing the uh like the uh the the power star stuff where it was like when they become invincible and they're just like running down the street and like there's a scene where one of the one of the like bigger koopas tries to smash them with a hammer and it just like breaks on their face Mm, yeah yeah um yeah i just like i feel like that is a a different way to show invincibility like i feel like there's a lot of like um i don't know i i I guess a lot of a lot of shows and movies where someone becomes invincible they don't just like like invincible and unstoppable are not always the same thing like it's like you just can't hurt them but in this one it's like we're running down the street and no matter what you throw at us we're just gonna like run through it yeah yeah so it was a little interesting uh but overall i'd say um i I feel like it was just a a hint that reminded me of how much better things could have been earlier because that's literally the first time in the movie at least since they like get sucked down the pipe the first time in the movie that we see mario and luigi working together Right, and it just like it made me wish that we had more. I agree. Yeah, I mean, the whole premise was that they can work together, that they can do their plumbing, you know, uh, business together, that they can just do whatever they put their minds to, as long as they're together. Yeah. And then you only get maybe a total of ten minutes of them together in the movie, yeah. not taking into account like the dog scene that they're getting because that was just way too much. But yeah. I'm right there with you. Um, but yeah, so they they beat him. They turned Bowser into a tiny little person with one of their little blue mushrooms and stick him in a jar. <laughs> with a piano. He gave him a piano. Yeah. And then that was really it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was that. And then there's and like a that. scene where um uh like Mario wakes up and it like it looks like he's in his bedroom, but then they go outside and they're in the mushroom kingdom again. Right. Like, I guess they, like, built a new home there. I just like that area more because there's more pipes. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I don't know. Just, they just relate. They never explained why they moved over there. Maybe they just didn't like their family anymore. Who knows? Yeah. They're like, actually, I hate my whole yeah. family. So, yeah. bye. Later. <laughs> Which, honestly, understandable. Like I said, dad's, dad's a jerk. jerk. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah that, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I agree. And then there's that, that egg in the sewer scene. And then that was GG's yeah. to the movie. That was GG. Yeah, overall, I mean, I, I would definitely say a fun watch. If you have kids that, you know, like the Mario franchise and stuff like that, definitely would take them or at least buy the movie to yeah, watch it. This would be a great movie for kids. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, if you want to just watch 90 minutes of references, you can sit there and be like, oh, I recognize that. Oh, I recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're like me that doesn't so know any that's references. That's what you're interested in. <laughs> you could do that too. <laughs> I guess it's just a lot less impactful. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of, let's get into trivia. And I'll tell you right now, a lot of this trivia is also just more references because that's the only interesting part about this movie. All right. Well, I will understand it just to let you know ahead of time. Uh, so first one here, uh, the game cabinet in the pizzeria early in the film is called Jumpman. And that is because the character of Mario was originally called Jumpman when he first appeared in the video game Donkey Kong in 1981. The character's name was changed to Mario as a tribute to the landlord of Nintendo's warehouses. No way. Okay, see, that's really fucking cool. That's really cool. Good good for them. I guess the, the landlord may have asked or something like that. I don't know. Oh, it, I mean, maybe it was. And then how'd they come up with yeah. Luigi? I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey, that's kind of cool. Jump man. <laughs> Yeah, so you'll hear uh, a lot of people on the internet reference him nowadays as uh, Mario Jumpman Mario, LOL. which is another thing. I meant to bring that up earlier, but this is one thing that I thought was very strange is they never address their last name in this movie. And I know that's a point of contention a little bit because that's one thing where they in the the old Mario movie, the really bad one, 
they did explain it because it's like usually when you say the blank brothers you use their last name so saying the mario brothers implies that mario is their last name which means that mario's name is mario mario and luigi's name is luigi mario right i mean do they have which is very silly i not canonically no okay um but uh you'd think in like if they're gonna be like making this a little bit more realistic and like yeah these are just two guys from brooklyn and they have a plumbing company like i would imagine those people have last names for sure they never talk about them and so it's just also strange why it's like why is your company called the mario brothers when that's only one of your names uh <laughs> but yeah there was a there after that movie came out a lot of that was like default belief for a lot of people is like yeah it's mario mario and luigi mario um but nintendo has since come out and said that that the characters don't have last names it's just mario and just Luigi. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah, I had no idea that that was a thing. No clue. I never even thought about the last names, honestly. That's just like a I don't know. That's something I would think well, about. It will, it will always it will always remain that way in my head. <laughs> the Mario Mario. <laughs> Luigi Mario. Yep. Mario Mario Jumpman Mario. All right. Well. Uh, a French restaurant in the movie is called Chasse du Canard and can be seen in some of the background shots. Uh, this name translates to Duck Hunt, which is another early Nintendo game. That's pretty cool. Uh, when Luigi's phone rings, his ringtone is the startup jingle from the Nintendo GameCube. Might I say that again? When his phone rings, it's... Wait. Yeah, his ringtone is the like the startup sound that plays when you start a Nintendo GameCube. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think I've only heard this sound maybe a handful of times. Gotcha. Uh, Spike, the man who mocks Mario and Luigi at the pizzeria, is actually Foreman Spike and was introduced in the 1984 game Wrecking Crew, in which Mario and Luigi are demolition workers. What the heck? Okay. Is that a reference? Yeah, it's a, it's a reference to the Wrecking Crew game. Oh, uh, you have never played that either. Is that Rack, Wreck It Ralph? No, it's something different. Yeah, oh, I think it's it, yeah. No, the Wreck It Ralph is not a real video game that was made just for that movie. But uh, I guess it is similar in premise. But yeah, the the idea is that they Mario and Luigi used to work for Spike. And then they quit to start a plumbing business. Mm, interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, also, the pizzeria that they're in at the beginning is called the Punch Out Pizzeria, and Punch Out is another Nintendo game. God damn! How many games does a Nintendo have? A lot. Jeez, always. Uh, yeah. I, it, did you notice all these things during the movie, or is this something that you researched afterwards? You're like, oh, okay. There's no way. I've never played. I've never played Wrecking Crew, but I'm aware of who Spike is. Uh, same with Punch Out. I like I know Damn. all of these games even though I've never played them so yeah. yeah I'm lost during the rainbow road chase Mario flies off the edge of the road and lands on a bottom part to get away in Mario Kart 64 there was a huge shortcut on the rainbow road level where you did the exact same thing oh I think I've done that before yeah I've never I don't remember ever being able to get it I remember it being a thing but every time I tried to do that shortcut I would just fall off the map yeah I think I've done it once on accident I'm pretty sure I'm like oh yeah sure actually um and then our last piece of trivia here when mario and toad try to enter peach's castle the two toad guards joke that the princess is in another castle this is a reference to the original super mario brothers where at the end of each world a toad said thank you mario but our princess is in another castle wait what so at the end of the game so yeah that's that's what makes the the game keep going because you have so in a normal mario game you have like five to ten levels and then you have a castle uh-huh. and you go through that castle and it's like a boss level and then you get to the end of the boss level and then a toad comes out and he's like thanks for saving me but peach isn't here so you have to go to a different castle so then you do like seven more levels and then you have another castle and then seven more levels in another castle and every time you beat a castle they're like thanks for saving me but peach isn't here uh, and oh every time God. they say our princess is in another castle until you get to the end of the game and then obviously peach is at that one Interesting. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. It's like some game lingo that I didn't know of. So yeah, that's that's why they make that joke when he gets to the castle. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But she was actually there. So they lied. Yeah. I thought that was just them trying to like, you know, ward him off of like, sorry, no one's home. 
But I mean, yeah, I think that's the way they were trying to play it, but it's also a, re- a reference to the game. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's very cool. Good for them for putting all those references in there, man. That, that's a lot. Yeah, like I said, very, very reference heavy movie. Yeah. <laughs> Good for the the Mario lovers out there. Um, Yeah, that's it for trivia. So I guess let's get wrecked. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, please. Um, I can just go first if you have nothing in mind, or if you, uh, I've got something. All right, well, I'll go first anyway. Um, um, All right. <laughs> I don't know if. Okay, so this is. I'm, I'm looking into it. Um, fly fishing. If you guys have never really been big in fishing, um, like me, I've I've never been big in fishing. I always thought it was kind of like a weird thing to do to go out there and just like hang out and throw things in the water and try to catch something underneath it. But dude, it is actually quite hella fun, man. It's like super relaxing. I did it when I was camping with a few buddies like a weekend ago. And I'm definitely considering getting into that hobby just because like the the excitement factor of, of fly fishing, like just like throwing this rod like back and forth to get the, it, it's a lot more skill than just throwing like a regular fishing line out there with like a bobber. Um, so if you've never done it, my recommendation is if you have a friend, you guys can rent some gear, go fly fishing. It's quite a lot of fun. Interesting. How, like, did, do you not, like, is there not a bobber when you're fly? No, no. So, well, I guess you could have one, but fly fishing is basically you have like this ultra light line and you like, you throw it back and forth to get the line longer and longer. And then you toss it in the water and there's a, there's a dry fly, which basically sits on top of the water. And you just basically, it looks like a bug that's sitting on top of the water and the fish will come up and eat the little bug. And then there's I gotcha. there's a wet fly, which will hang below the water at a certain level, which at that point, I think you might need a bobber or your line will just float on its own. So it's a different type of fishing. It's a lot more active because you have to throw the the rod uh, back and forth and like let line out that way. It's a lot more, I guess, hands-on than just like tossing the reel once, like releasing and letting the weight just carry it out. It's, it's pretty cool to watch too. I don't know, it's different. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, my recommendation for today is going to be uh, the, uh, the new game uh, Jedi Survivor. Um, for those of you that have played Jedi Fallen Order, uh, this is the sequel to that game. And so far, I really like it. Um, I think, I mean, first of all, if you haven't played Fallen Order, go play that because also a great game. Um, but I think there's been a lot of trash talk about Jedi Survivor recently because they didn't do a, a great job with um, the PC port. Um, so I guess if you want to play it on a console, that would probably be the easiest way to play it. Yeah. Um, but I have had minimal problems with mine. I think most of the people who are experiencing problems are people with like super, super high end computers. For some reason, the game just like isn't optimized for those. And so a lot of really? people will have like, like their games are constantly crashing and stuff. Um, but I, I have probably only had like, Oh, I'd probably have to say maybe one crash every like eight hours of gameplay. Honestly, any crash is too much for PC. I mean, it's still annoying, but it's not like it's not unplayable. That's fair. And I feel like some people are like, yeah, I can't even get past the starting screen. And I'm like, nah, mine mine works like 90% of the time. It works fine. It's just every once in a while. It's like, oops. Mm, interesting. <laughs> and then I'm like, I just restart it and it doesn't take that long to get back into. And there's like a pretty uh like uh, um there's pretty frequent save points so you never really like lose a lot of progress uh, when it crashes okay 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 see that that makes the game more manageable if there's like a lot of save points like yeah. I, I can't stand when a game crashes and like you have to go back and redo the same shit again i mean you do a the, fast the way still. yeah the the way that it works in the jedi series is there are points around the map called meditation points yeah and when you reach them they're kind of like um that's how you do all of your you can like upgrade your skills there you can in uh jedi survivor they introduce something called perks you can change your perks there uh you can change your stances there you can um and then that's also that's how you save the game is by meditating and then you can also use them as fast travel points so you can travel between different meditation points gotcha that's dope good wreck we'll have to look into it uh, but yeah, if you if you're a fan of uh, Star Wars, or honestly, even if you're like I know 
a lot of the stuff that Star Wars has been releasing recently, uh, like the Mandalorian and the Boba Fett series and all that, that stuff's not not been great. Um, but if you want a good story set in the Star Wars universe, uh, would highly recommend these two games. Noted. All right. With that being said, uh, I would like to say for our audience, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. Tell your friends and family about us. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CashFanPod. If you want to send us a message, you can do so on either of those platforms, or you can send an email to casualfanaticpodcast at gmail.com. Links to all of those will be in the description. Luca, can you tell them what kind of messages they can send us? Yeah, and on all those platforms, there are ways to reach us. Highly recommend um, if there's a specific movie out there that you want us to review to let us know, um, even if it's like a childhood movie or if it's a current movie or if there's a movie that you've heard about or you aren't really sure if you want to watch it or not, you can ask us and uh, we can review that. Um, yeah, if there's like some things that you want to change on our podcast or things there's like, like that you love or things that you see that could be you know better about it, let us know about those two and we'll do our best to incorporate them. Awesome. And uh, for those of you that like to be prepared, um, I believe next week we are going to be talking about uh, the new movie Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which I've heard good things about. So have I. So I'm very excited to see that. Very excited to talk about it. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. Let's do it. Uh, This has been Casual Fanatic. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 